is is this is this recording? Oh my god. Okay, um, I'm out here on the plains of Hisui looking for any signs of life, any Pokemon that I can find. I think let's see, uh, over there. Look over there. Okay, let's see what we can find here. Um, wait, is that? I think it is. Hello, the 31st here. How's it going? It's a new character design analysis for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Today, we're looking at the Wardens, Mai, Leon, Iskan, and Arazu. Now, if you didn't see the trailer, you might be wondering, well, the heck's a Warden? So, let me answer that for you right now. The Wardens are very special individuals in the land of Hisui, whose job it is to care for and protect special, noble Pokemon and their territories. And if you really didn't watch the trailer, you're probably even more confused what noble Pokemon are bigger, beefier Pokemon blessed with a divine light whose divine right it is to rule over areas in the land of Hisui. Cleavor being the example in the trailer. The Wardens basically just give them offerings of food and water and keep them safe. However, none of the Wardens carry Pokeballs. Instead, they just have a boatload of pockets, presumably just full of nuts or whatever. Okay, so before I cover each individual warden, first I need to go over the different tribes of Hisui to give you a better understanding of their outfits. On the Hisuian map from the previous trailer, the eagle, or I guess bravery-eyed among you, may have noticed two distinct factions of natives. In the north is a faction cloaked in garbs that embody the spirit of Palkia, the lord of space. And in the south and east is a faction dressed in robes that resemble Dialga, the lord of time. And the reason I bring this up is because the wardens belong to these tribes. Mai, Iskan, and Arazu are from the south, and Leon is from the north. Overall, like I said, these outfits resemble the legendary Pokemon Dialga and Palkia, embodying their general colour schemes and designs, specifically on the hoods, which have their faces and the Palkia one even has a little crest on top. And just like in the previous video, Camon or crests play a large role in the designs of these characters. Both tribes have their own crests which are located on their chest. Additionally, these seem to be Camon that the entire village can wear. They can also be seen at the entrance of the Grand Tree Arena, where we'll battle Cleavor, the Lord of the Woods. Because both these crests are there, I don't think the two tribes are antagonistic to one another. It's possible that they're rivals, but they clearly work together, likely for a wider purpose or goal. And if we look at the crests themselves, we can see that the northern tribes is entirely formed of curved lines that form blades and circles. This could be to represent Pearl and Palkia. On the other hand, the southern tribes is entirely comprised of straight lines and sort of looks like a shrine or maybe even an upside down face. Again, this could represent steel or diamond for Dialga. Both the outfits of the southern and northern tribes have general layouts. However, each individual warden adds their own personal flair. There are also differences between these outfits for each gender that do seem to carry across both tribes. Overall, these outfits consist of the hoodie on top, which, as I said, represent either Palkia or Dialga, especially in the hood, with a skin-tight sort of turtleneck, under-armor style undershirt underneath, which, as far as I can tell, are white for the girls and black for the boys, as well as forearm guards on the wrists. Then at the bottom is this kind of gi-esque skirt that just sort of pokes out from underneath the hoodie. Honestly, I don't know how to describe it, so that's the best you're going to get from me. Then on the legs are either skin-tight leggings for the girls or skin-tight trousers for the boys. The boys and girls also have different styles of boots that carry across both tribes. Now, earlier I described them as natives, but honestly, that's not confirmed. They could be settlers like us that have just decided to join... Uh, a cult, either worshipping Palkia in the north or Dialga in the south and east, for whatever reason. But with that major element of these characters' designs out of the way, let's look at the specifics of their aesthetics and who they might be related to. The first Warden we got to see in the trailer was Mai. Mai is a member of the Southern Tribe and the Warden of a particularly special Weirdeer. Her southern tribe Dialga outfit is the most faithful of the Wardens that we know of so far because it includes every single component. However, it's stylized with a variety of artwork. On her right shoulder is an Ursa ring with lightning. On her right hip is a Stantler with flowers. 
this could be a hint to maybe seasonal variants of Stantler, or maybe the mode of evolution. Maybe this flower is what allows Stantler to become weirdier, and that flower has become extinct in Sinnoh. On her left hip are blue flames, and her left shin is a white pattern with some kind of wheat or maybe barley, which could play a role later in the video. These could potentially be more hints at noble Pokemon that the Wardens of the Southern Tribe look after. However, up to now, every single one has been an entirely new evolution of a previous Pokemon, so regular Ursaring wouldn't really fit that theme. Around her waist are three pouches, presumably just full of, you know, stuff. Okay, so we've avoided the obvious for long enough. Immediately upon seeing her, it was pretty clear to everyone whose ancestor Mai is. Mai is the ancestor of the Sinnoh region's Mali. Their hairstyles and faces are incredibly similar, and they share the same blue eyes. Importantly, their names are also derived from the same source. In Japanese, Mali's name actually has the character Mai in it, because they're both named after rice. And in English, Mali's name comes from barley. Which? Ah? Uh, ah? Uh. And Mai's hair is a red and white pin, potentially related to Hisuian Arcanine. Arcanine is the ace of Marley's team in the future, and many people have suggested that due to the design inspirations of the new Growlithe form, the evolution will have two horns. However, there's no guarantee that Mai will have an Arcanine, as Marley's team is built for speed, prioritizing only the most rapid Pokemon. Mai, on the other hand, is partnered with a Munchlax. Mai also lets us know that the Wardens don't keep their Pokemon in Pokeballs, or at least she doesn't. This might simply be because they are new inventions by a different cultural group that the tribes aren't integrated with. However, keeping powerful Pokemon safe from something capable of threatening them will require strength of their own. This means being a capable trainer is going to be a near necessity for the Wardens. And in the trailer, we do see the beginnings of a battle between the player and Mai. Overall, her animations show us a level of maturity and confidence, sort of like a teacher, you know, standing around with her arms crossed, looking important. Finally, as I said at the beginning, we know that Mai is the warden of a very special weird ear, likely this one that we get to ride around on in the trailer. On her right wrist is a bracelet that signifies her wardenness and shows us the creature she cares for. This weird ear bracelet is pink, but weird ear is a normal psychic type. This, you know, may not actually have any connection to the type of the Pokemon, or it could be a combination of white and purple, but maybe it's because weird is meant to be fairy? There's also these black orbs that you can see in the trailer as well, for obviously Weird Ear Stantler's black orbs that it has. On closer inspection though, it's clear to me that this bracelet doesn't actually show a Weird Ear. That is a Stantler. You can actually tell from the antlers. Those are definitely Stantlers. Weird Ears would look like this. Case in point, this is the icon used in the trailer to denote the Weird Ear Noble that we can call and ride. Oh, yeah, by the way, the uh, noble Pokemon are Pokemon that we are able to call using a flute to aid us in our journey. You know, like this weird deal we can ride, also the Basque Legion we can ride, and I guess Cleavor is it's gonna be essentially HM Cut. I mean, it cuts down a tree in the trailer, and it has big axe hands. I can't really think of anything else it would do. I guess it could carry us, but, you know... There's, there's better things for that. With the Stantler design on her leggings, we can see that Stantler doesn't appear to have any differences. So there's potential that maybe the special weirdo we see in the trailer that we can ride and that the Wardens look after is different in appearance to the regular version of the evolution. What I mean is that noble Pokemon may just look different from regular versions of that Pokemon without, you know, divine energy. Cleavor's webpage states that noble Pokemon are larger and definitely different from the normal version. Well, that's my done. Next is Arazu, a young warden who feels the immense pressure of her job and likes to solve problems on her own. And once again, the connection to the characters in Sinnoh is pretty apparent. She is almost certainly the ancestor of Galactic Commander Mars. And it is wild how strong the genetics are in Pokemon, even how it affects how your hair grows. While they have the exact same red eyes and hair, her looks aren't the only evidence. Arazu's name comes from Ares, 
the Greek god of war. This relates her to Mars as in Roman mythology, Mars is the god of war. And potentially, they are actually the same person. Arazu has pale skin, but bright, rosy cheeks, and paired with that delightful smile, it really gives her a sincere appearance that contrasts the God of War moniker. Overall, her tribal outfit is by far the most casual and comfy version we've seen. The hoodie is more baggy and breathable, with a large cross stitch on the side. Through those stitches, we can see the dark shorts and undershirt, however, Unlike the other wardens, the undershirt isn't a skin-tight turtleneck. In fact, her neck and collarbone are completely exposed. She even has her own version of the leggings with black to red gradient. Again, probably relating her back to Mars. In fact, the boots are the only standard part of her design. Finally, she has a single large pouch tied over her shoulder. In her animations, she is energetic but casual, young, vibrant and friendly. It really does paint an interesting picture of her as a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed warden who's just trying her best. The relaxed nature of her attire and demeanour in the trailer doesn't seem like someone who's gonna be a lord of war. Or like someone who's gonna go on to have ancestors that try and kill all of humanity and take over the world. When it comes to which Pokemon she's warden of, they're keeping it very close to their chest. All we know is that she cares for a certain lady Pokemon, but sneakily, they never show us the bracelet on her right wrist. As a result, we don't have much to go off. It's green, which means it could theoretically be a grass or bug type. However, given that Mize is pink, who knows? In terms of special lady Pokemon that would work with the color green, there's actually a pretty decent list. Theramosa, Illumise, Lilligant, Zarina, maybe even Vespaqueen. Although, like I said, all the noble Pokemon we've seen so far are brand new regional evolutions of ones we already know. Unfortunately, Vespaqueen has been in the trailer already so far, but if they are potentially different to regular evolutions, being noble Pokemon, that doesn't rule them out just yet. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to call it there. Um, while I had planned to do all four wardens in one video, this is getting pretty long and I think I'm gonna have to cut it in half. So please tune in next time for the character design analysis on Isken and Leon, because those two are maybe my favorites. Additionally, if you haven't already watched it, I've done a character design analysis for the other characters we saw in the previous trailer, Kamado, Silene, and Laventon as well as loads of character design analysis videos on all the Sword and Shield characters. So if you enjoyed this, please go watch those and like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date and watch the next ones as soon as they come out. Turn on the notifications. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one because I'm looking forward to it and I hope you are as well. <laughs> all right, peace out people, goodbye.